This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. With all that singing, hi, it's Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that toothless wonder we see in front of us. <laughs> He's getting it fixed, folks. You know. Yeah. You just, he's at the. How old are you now? Sixty-six. Sixty-six. At sixty-six, his teeth are starting to go. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Well, you know. So All at I, once. I still got most of mine, although I have three implants. So. Right. That's uh, not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, but what I, I was talking to you, you know, you're good friends with Will Durst. Yes, very you know, good friend. In fact, every time I talk to Will, they say, oh, uh, Stephen Kravitz, our son. Right. You, you know, they consider you uh, your parents. Right, right, uh, right. And they have I been. I call Will dad. They have been to you. They've cared about you. You know, they've been there for you when you needed them. Right. They were, you know. So anyway, uh, uh, I, I, I finally, you know, every time I try to call him, sometimes he's not there or he doesn't answer or he... You know, he's kind of in La La Land part of the time, right? And and for folks who don't know about Wilders, guy had a stroke. Guy's a stand-up two comic. Two years ago. Two, two and a half years ago, I think. Was Is it, it two and a half years now? I think yeah. two and a half years. It'll be three in November, if I'm not mistaken. Is it November or October? Maybe October. You know, ask... ask uh, a a ask Bubbles. He knows every date known to mankind. Yeah, he, well, y you know, he, he, he's the rain man. He's the rain man. Anyway, so Will, um, uh, who does this program, so people know know that he's even done it while he's had, had this after he had the stroke. Um, he uh, he's been in bed for two and a half years. His leg has been killing him, just killing him. And they say, oh, it's a matter of the stroke, and we got to get that leg going, and you've got to be able to stand up on it so that you can. You know. In other words, the leg was a primary concern of theirs. Right, he, he, right, he, that I know. He's had pain for the better part of a year in that leg. I mean, sometimes excruciating pain. So they've been trying to figure out what it is, and they say it's the stroke, you know, and it's because of the stroke. He goes to the doctor, and the do he says, Doc, do me a favor. Would you please uh, x-ray this leg just to look at it and see what's right. wrong, you know, to make sure that it's that. Oh, no, you don't need, we know what it is, you know. But they kept saying, we know what it is, we know what it is, we know what it is. Well, he finally just said, just humor me, give me an x-ray. Right. Gave him an x-ray and they meant, oh, my God, you've got a broken hip. Oh, really? The ball joint in the hip is broken. After th th two and a half years in bed and not being able to get that leg going, they found out it's the hip. Damn. <laughs> is, is that crazy Damn. or what? You know? That make you lose faith in doctors. Oh, it's it's nuts if you think about it. So what are they going to do? Do a hip replacement? Yeah, they're going to at the end of the month. And I said to him, well, that's, you know, in normal cases, if somebody told me uh, you you have a broken hip, I go, oh, my God. In this right. case, I went to him, oh, thank God. You right. Know, is that all it is, a broken right. hip? You know, and he went, yeah, it's a broken hip. That's what's causing me all the pain. How did he break a hip, though, in bed? Who knows? You know, I, I, I'm not even, maybe it could be they were doing all that therapy, trying to get him Right, up. they might have broke his hip. They could well have, you know. I'm not suggesting that they did or they did it on purpose. No, they didn't do it on purpose, but, I'm sure. But they, they did it, you know. Uh, but it, it's amazing. It's just amazing. And, and I would, me, if it happened to me, I would be, well, I'd be happy I had a broken hip instead of uh, the stroke causing that. 
But right. on the other hand, I would be really pissed that nobody I'd be angry. that nobody caught this earlier. I'd be very angry. Yeah. I mean nobody Considering I was complaining about pain all the way through, it's like why didn't they investigate it? Why didn't they do their detective work? Exactly. Why didn't they do their due diligence? Well, you know, I gotta tell you, as I get older, like Marjorie, I gotta tell you, Marjorie, if it weren't for dentists, she'd have no social life. Okay, I mean, it wasn't for doctors. She wouldn't have. She'd have no social life. I mean, today it was the dentist. Two days ago right. it was her knee. A couple of days before that it was something else. Next week she's going to this. The week after that she's going to that. Pop, 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 pop. She has like a whole bunch of doctors, and I keep saying to her, with these many doctors, you should be dead by now. You know, but yeah. no, I mean, but she go to, goes to these doctors, uh, which, okay, all right, so we, we've established that. The fact is that I have a, a group of doctors, but I only have like, I have a, a internist, and I have a urologist, and I have a neurologist, okay? And an oncologist, don't you? Uh, well, the oncologist, it's funny, the oncologist, it's like they do what they got to do and then you no longer, you're dead to them. They don't, <laughs> really, outside, outside of one follow-up that they have to do, that's it. And I called, right. I called up my urologist finally because I've been seeing the oncologist and I said, hey, you know, I, I'm trying to, I'm wondering, I, I need to get one of these PSA tests to see how I'm doing. And I don't, I you know, I write them, and I don't hear that anything back. And he says, "Fuck them, just come to me." He said, "Once these oncologists are through with you, that's it. They're done. They're done. You know, they've done their work. They, they you know, they don't even know if the, if it worked. They, they just know it worked up to a point because three months in, they give you some tests and things like that. Right, right, right. So, uh, you know, um, uh." But I'm, I don't have that many doctors, and I don't want that many doctors. You know, I'm Well, not, if you don't need them, why would you want them? Well, I mean, I could be like Marjorie, and oh, my, my, my hand is bothering me. I do have a person for the hand, but I only see him occasionally. Uh, you know, What's wrong with your hand? Well, arthritis, and then I, I, I fell on it when I fell, had this, this big fall. And I fell on the hand to, to stop myself, and the whole hand right. to this day really hurts. Uh, you know, my right hand is completely numb, and it's cold. It's colder than my left hand. Oh, really? Yeah, I had a, I had a mild stroke a couple of years back. Really? Yeah, you didn't know that? No. Yeah. Wow. Did you when know? I was in, say what? Did you know you were having the stroke? No. Didn't know you were having the stroke, and so no, I I fell down and I couldn't get up. I literally could not get up. Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, yeah. Oh, well, I did. I fell. I tripped. No, I didn't trip on anything. Yeah. I just fell. And I and I I, I uh, where is it? Somewhere here. Uh, if you can still see it, it's a little changing color there. I I hit there, and the inside of the lip. And then I suddenly realized that my hand was hurting like crazy. I couldn't, I couldn't do this, okay? I'm still having a hard time doing it. But it seems like it keeps getting better every day. But I had arthritis right here, so they gave me a shot for the arthritis, just, uh, you know, some kind of steroid or whatever, and it makes it better. Right. Okay? No big deal. Very common. They, I was told by the doctor, right here is the most common place for people to get arthritis. Even if you're really? not, even if you're not prone to arthritis, this is where you get it for some reason. Mm. But anyway, it's still been hurting a lot, but it's getting better. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm just letting it get better. But I mean, for a while, this hand was just trashed. Uh, but. Uh, you know, I didn't go to the doctor about it because I figured as long as I keep doing this, uh, I didn't break the hand. But right, anyway, right. Anyway, it's take, it's about a month ago and it still hurts. You know, it's getting better, marginally better, but it's getting better. See, here we are, folks. This is not a kind of program that any young person wants to listen to. Well, you don't know that. Well, they might want to know what they're going to get into in a, a couple of decades. I think they're kind of like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> they don't want to know. Right. They don't want to know. You know, 
but I mean, I consider consider Kravitz and I, Lewis and Clark, <laughs> and we're forging out across unknown territory. Isn't that the truth? Ahead of us is our Sacagawea, who is right looking in the distance, and we're looking back at you and saying, "Here's what you have to look forward to." Right, right, right. <laughs> If you live long enough. If you live long enough. I mean, I'm 82, and every day, um, you know, uh, who was it? Carl Reiner said that every day when he woke up, he read the obituaries to make sure he was still alive. <laughs> you know. Uh, right. He said, after I looked at it, saw I wasn't there, I then had breakfast and went out. <laughs> and right. I, it started my day. Uh, you know, I start hearing about all these people, you know, so-and-so died at 82, and I'm going, geez, you know. I have this great fear of death, so it's, it's you know, it's it's out there in front of me, you know. I've got this, this you see him back of me with the scythe, you know? No, oh, right, 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 right. Right? The uh, angel of death. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I never thought I'd make it to 66. I never thought I'd make it to 40. Yeah, well, I... You know, in a way, I wish I knew when I was going to die. I wish I knew when the expiration date was, because I'd hate to leave any money behind. <laughs> you know, Isn't that the truth? Right now, I'm not spending my money because I don't know how long I'm going to live. And then right. when I die, somebody else is going to get it, you know? Well, that's okay. Uh, I just figure, I, I, I figure I'm going to spend it because, well, Marjorie's got an apartment that we can sell. That's going to be right. worth. A, that's worth a lot of money, and uh, you know we're taken care of, I guess, for the rest of our lives. But what if I live to be, like I had a friend. We had a friend whose husband uh, got Parkinson's, and as time went on, he had to go into a nursing home. Mm -hmm. He's been in that nursing home for three years. He just died. Okay, how much do you think they were paying a month for that? I have no idea. Thank God they had money. They were both lawyers. Um, eighteen thousand dollars a month. Oh my God! Eight. Oh my God! Thousand dollars a fucking month. What a what, man! Let the guy uh, just die already. It, they must be thinking. If if I die, you know, uh, with the kind of money we have, I'm in a nursing home with rats. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, roaches crawling all over my body while I lie there drooling. Right, but that's a nicer nursing home than I'd end up in. Uh, uh, well, yeah, you're right. You're right. You, they just take your body and say, well, wait till you die and we'll just bury you, you know. Right, 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 right. We'll just throw a mattress on the floor and you just curl up there until you die. I'll tell you, you know what my great guilt in life is? What's that? I've yet to put a tombstone on my mother's grave. I put one, when I was a finalist in the comedy competition, me and my brothers uh, bought a headstone for my mother. And how long had she been dead? She had been dead nine years. Nine years, okay. Well, my mother's been dead about, I don't know. I think she's been dead, uh, oh, about, about, uh, 15, 16 years, maybe longer. Is that right? Mm -hmm. well, my mom died in 77. Yeah. Well, I always made a big joke about it, saying, well, I'm just trying to figure out what I was going to do for a tombstone. And I finally decided my father has a very small tombstone. And, mm -hmm. and I don't want to get another one, small one next to her for her. So I put up one over both their graves. Right. A big one that says, here lies Ruth and uh, Alex and Ruth Schwarzman. Parents of, and then big letters, Alex Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to get my money's worth for crying out loud. Well, there you go. You know, Maybe have blinking lights on it. I had a friend of mine who died. Yeah, all my friends die. I had, uh, he was a, a teacher years ago at the Actors Studio. And, oh, really? and a well-known director and discovered James Dean and so on. His name was Jack Garfine. Mm -hmm. And um, married Carol Baker. Do you remember Carol Baker in the movies? No. Baby Doll? Okay. Yeah, that was her. 
she had a big, pretty big career. They, they weren't married when he died. Uh, but anyway, Jack, uh, what was the point I was going to make about Jack? Oh, yeah, so Jack dies, and we go out for the, the burial at the cemetery. And uh, for some reason, there's a thing with the Russians. I don't know what it is, but we pass all these, these tombstones. Right. And every one of them has a stylized picture of the person on the tombstone. Oh, that's it's like, creepy. It's like a photograph they've taken and engraved or uh, attached to the tombstone. No, I, that's I, just creepy. It's very, but I mean, there were literally hundreds of these. And I'm going. So that's creepy times a hundred. I'm going. What happened to the traditional tombstone? What What is so wonderful about putting your loved one's picture there? You know, and it's not a picture. I don't know. Well, maybe I want to be cremated. I want to be cremated. I don't want to be buried. Well, Marjorie wants to cremate me, and I don't know about they say I just don't know about any of that. I don't know what I'm going to need after I'm gone. You know, we have no idea what happens after we die. I think after we die, we're dead. Well, my father once described it as was like, I told him I was afraid of death. And my father said, well, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of it. You've been there before. I said, what do you mean? He said, before you were born is like it's going to be after you're dead. And you can't remember anything that happened before you were born. Right. You know, and I'm going, yeah, I didn't exist then and I won't exist. Well, I said, that's, it just uh, scares the crap out of me. <laughs> you know, the idea that, hmm, I didn't exist. What was that like? You know, my latest theory is, well, nothing. you know what happens when you die? Everybody ceases to exist with you. What do you mean? Everybody ceases to exist with you because you have, there's nothing going on. There's no more of this world in your brain. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So everybody disappears. Now, they may still be here afterwards, but we have no concept of that because we're dead. Oh, right. That's right. So, that's right. So that really when I go, I'm taking Now, do you think there's an afterlife? Is there an afterlife? No, in the traditional sense, you know, heaven harps crap like right. that. No, absolutely no. not. Do I think? I agree. I, do I think there's something? I don't know. You know, I mean, there is. There are theories that we don't only live on this plane; we live on several others. That there's there are many dimensions of existence. Uh, yeah, but they're all just theories. They're all theories. None well, of it is. Tracks. I think this is part of string theory that okay. that this is one dimension that we also live on about up to nine other dimensions, uh, and our lives may be different in each of those dimensions. You know, uh, and that perhaps we keep living in those other dimensions. I don't know. I have no idea. You right. Know, I have no idea if there is an answer to that question, Steve. It's got to be scientific, and right. and I don't know what that scientific answer is. Uh, uh, I, I I probably think nothing, you know, and um, uh, that there's nothing there. But you know, we, we don't know. I mean, I I hate to think that I spent 82 years so far with this brain acquiring knowledge and things like that, only to have it go completely to waste. You know, I hate to think that, for instance, people who I love as as performers or as artists or whatever spent their whole life at their craft perfecting it, perfecting it, perfecting it, and then they die. Right. And 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 that that dies with them. That all goes with them. Then what did you spend that whole life gaining that ability for? You know. Well, if, you got if you get rewarded in this life. Well, you get rewarded in this life, but some people don't get rewarded. Van, That's true. Van Gogh never got rewarded. He only sold one painting in his whole life. Right. You know? It was only well, he was a little nuts. Well, I mean, if he were alive today, he'd be a multi-billionaire for all that his paintings have sold for. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. You know? Either that or if he were still alive, they'd look at the, at the flowers and go, eh, just fucking flowers. You know? Oh, look. <laughs> oh, they, 
it's just a starry sky and it doesn't even look like a sky. Right, <laughs> you know? right. I mean, who knows how, the only respect he got was when he, after he died, people discovered his paintings. Right. You know. Right. Uh, uh, and, and I, you know, I would hate it if any kind of legacy I have lives after me and all of a sudden I, oh, this great radio guy, have you heard this thing he did then and did this? And I never got recognized for it in my time. Hey, right. recognize me for it now and give me the money, okay? Right, you know, right, right. I and, feel the same way. And after I die, no more praises, all right? Yeah. I mean, I hate to say this, but Gilbert Gottfried today is a bigger comedian than a week ago when he was alive. That's true. You know? That's true. Because everybody suddenly says, here's how great he is. And they pull out all this, this stuff and you, you realize how brilliant he was. But same I, thing with Norm MacDonald. Norm Macdonald was one I missed, oddly enough. I didn't, I didn't get Norm Macdonald until after the fact, and I saw his body of work because it all showed up on YouTube. And I went, this yeah, guy, me too. I went, this guy was brilliant. Yeah, me too. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing, Alex. I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't well, a fan well, when he was alive. I was always a big fan of Gilbert's, you know. Yeah. But then again, I was, I was fairly close to Gilbert. I knew Gilbert well, and and. Uh, 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 I liked the guy, really liked the guy. And I realized what a funny comic he was. I mean, I've told people that the funniest time I ever spent with, in my life was at the Pierre Hotel here in New York City for high tea with Penn Jillette and Gilbert Gottfried and a group of other people who were joining in on this. And, right. And then Penn started telling a joke. And then Gilbert decided to top him. And then Penn decided to top him. Was it the aristocrats? No, the aristocrats never came up. We, okay. We all knew the aristocrats. We didn't want to hear right. that joke again. Uh, Penn's tour. Now, have you seen? Have you seen when Gilbert Goffrey does the aristocrats at a roast? Oh yeah, no, he's terrific. He was terrific. He was the best teller of that joke. Right. But, okay. Um, but the equi then, the equivalent joke was Penn's joke, which is the bear joke. Oh, I don't know the bear joke. The bear joke, oh. If I told it to you, it would take us the next half hour. If I do it, oh, if really? I do, if I do it justice. I can do the shorthand and, uh, um, well, here's a quick shorthand. A guy goes in the woods, shoots at a bear. Bear misses the bear, bear comes over, grabs his gun, break the rifle holds it up at him and says, you know, why'd you do this? He says, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. The, the, guy, the bear starts leaving. The guy sees him leaving. He goes, I can't miss again. He picks up the gun. Boom, he shoots the gun, misses the bear. The bear comes back, grabs the gun out of his hand, says, I thought you said you weren't going to do it again. I thought you knew that I, you know, you, you, you shouldn't shoot at me, you know. And I, I really, I, 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 I prefer you not try this again. All right? <laughs> Hands him back his gun, starts walking away. The guy thinks to himself, three times the charm. I can't miss. He shoot, picks up the gun, rifle, shoots it at the, at the bear, misses him. Bear comes over, grabs the gun, breaks it in half, and looks at him and says, you know what I'm going to do? He says, I'm going to fuck you in the ass. And he turns him over. And he fucks him in the ass. Big greasy bear dick, you know. It was just disgusting. Just absolutely disgusting. And the bear turns around and starts to walk away. The guy picks up the gun again. He says, I can't miss. And he's, he's just in pain. His ass is throbbing. He's just in total abject pain. Picks up the gun, shoots again. The bear turns around, comes back, grabs the gun, looks at the guy and goes, you know, somehow I don't think you came here to hunt. <laughs> That's the short That's version. That's the short version. When Penn told it, it became this opera. You know, right. it was, you know, this and the that and the that. But the, it takes him a half hour to tell the joke. Right. Uh, but that we didn't, these were shorter jokes. These were like, Pen, Gilbert. Pen, Gilbert. Pen, Gilbert. This went on for an hour, and they oh, were some really? of, they were some of the dirtiest jokes you ever heard in your life. Oh, I bet. You know, I bet. 
Gilbert Penn, Gilbert Penn, Gilbert Penn, till we're we're dying from laughter, and people are hearing these jokes at this high tea at the Piero Hotel. Right. You know, and just going, what's with these guys? These guys are crazy. These guys. But that are makes crazy. it even funnier. Oh yeah. Yeah. That makes it even funnier because of the situation you were in. Actually, I screwed up the bear joke. I should have told you that every time he went back, he'd fuck the guy in the ass. And then finally. Right. Yeah, so. But I suppose you, I guess you, I imagine you didn't come here to hunt. You know, right. Uh, yeah. So, hey, listen, we've run out of time again. Are you serious? It's just, it just flies by when I'm talking to you. You know? I should, right. You should be the only person I ever have on any of my shows. We'll just sit here and talk, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'd have Bubbles on with you, except Bubbles doesn't have a camera. Doesn't have a doesn't have a doesn't have the ability to do Zoom. He has a flip phone. He, he, well, no, he got rid of that. It broke. It, they it went out of. He couldn't make calls on it because they changed the system. Okay. So oh they, really? So they gave him a new free phone, and they had to go in the back room and find him another flip phone. So yeah. he's got another flip phone. Anyway, hey, my friend, let's do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? You up for All right, it? All right, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Alex. This is GavNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our go. Oh, let me turn on my lights here. Hey, wait a minute. There's no light on this side. Come on, there we go. You know, you know what happens? I've got these lights, and they work uh, using Wi-Fi. Okay, I can turn them on and off here using Wi-Fi, and sometimes, see, like this one doesn't go on immediately, and then, well, it decides to go on. Uh, I wish they just made these things so they worked when you just plugged them on, and that was it. Anyway, uh, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, Thursday night. And on Thursday nights, we tend to get less people starting to call at the top of the show. Uh, I only have one person waiting right now. And uh, uh, I, if, uh, if I don't, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I, I get insulted, you know, when, when I don't get a lot of people calling me. So anyway, um, I don't know what to do. Okay, well, let me, let me just bring on this guy because he's a regular and he... He cares a lot, and uh, he's always here, and he looks forward to the show being here and him being on it. And uh, so we'll uh, we'll bring in uh, we'll bring in Jeff Stein. Let me see here. We go to Zoom panel, and let's see if he's got it. Have you got your audio going? Got that on. You got it on. You're fine tonight. You're just fine. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just you and me. That's right. Who knows? Look at that. I'll, it, I'll it, even it, be it, the oh, right. Oh, vertical. Wait a minute. Scott Boddicker is calling. Good. <coughs> Always like to hear from Scott. Hello, Scott. How are you? Scott? Oh, hey. How you Can doing? You hear me? How you doing? Good. Yeah. Okay. So that's Scott. And uh, yeah. Two days in a row, man. The two days in a row. And today, <laughs> today it's just you and Jeff. Hey. And Jeff doesn't talk, and I don't talk. It's going to be pretty boring. <laughs> why, why don't we just sit here and look at the screen and just, you know, not say anything and just see if, if uh, right now we have a lot of people watching this, okay? Amazing how many, there are more people, wa well, there are, we have oh. a lot of people watching this. Are, are they logging off? No, no, the okay. one just left us. One just left us. To him, oh. there we go. Ah. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, but uh, by the way, um, um, I, I, I think it's kind of useless for me to say this, but if you get a chance, subscribe to our channel <laughs> because uh, uh, I, I could use a lot of people subscribing to the channel. I have no idea why, but everywhere you go on YouTube, there's some guy doing like his pissy little you know, podcast, and he's saying, oh, and by the way, be sure to uh, subscribe and uh, uh, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we're on the air. So hit the subscribe button 
and and please uh, be sure to if you want to be notified hit the hit the bell there that's there okay I, I saw a guy on YouTube today because I know you're into YouTube and you it's it's amazing the YouTube's a rabbit hole I tell you but but uh, it was this a uh, guy all he does is he goes around and finds the gravestones of famous celebrities oh really and he I don't know what he does with there watch it but I just he was he was just introducing uh, he was going he found uh, Donna Reed's Ellie Mae Clampett. Well, I years ago sold the idea for a book to um, I think it was was a Grove Press. I can't remember who it was, and it, they they wanted to do it. They I got a call when I was in in uh, in uh, uh, Norway for the Olympics from my business manager saying. They just want to, they just looked at your proposal for the book and they want to talk to you and they want to sign the book to their to their imprint. And the, what the book was, it was a book I was doing with a guy that I knew. And what we had done is gone out and gotten um, the uh, autopsy reports of famous people because they are public oh. records after all. Okay. So, uh, you know, you want to go find a, an autopsy report. Everybody who dies has to have an autopsy. Well, right. if it's suspicious. Well, I think even if it isn't suspicious, there has to be nah. some kind of report nah. filed. It's a yeah. de death notice. Well, there's a death certificate, death, but not an uh, autopsy. Oh, excuse me, death certificates. They weren't death. autopsies. Some of them were autopsies, but yes, most sure. of them were death certificates. Okay. And they were f death certificates of famous people. And, uh, I titled the book Final Notice. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it was a great idea for a book, but it never got done. I, I got back to the United States, and all of a sudden, they had changed their minds. Uh, so that was it. We started off, the first one we actually got was Kurt Cobain's. And we said, well, this is a good idea for a book. And the guy had been going out and collecting the, these things, and so we went out and collected more of them. We just found you go online and find them. And in those days, online was not as... Uh, much as it is now, I could probably go online right now and find death certificates for, for everybody, you know? So. I guess you just look in county records or. Is, I know, guess. Where I, the guy I, I guess. I forget where we got them all, but you could get. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I never tried to look for death certificates, but. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll look. Find just about everything else. Well, you can go look for mine, you know, when it's time. I bet there is an Alex oh, Bennett mom. out there that's dead. Let me go find that. Well, you know, newspapers, uh, in newspapers, TV stations, radio stations, uh, all had obituaries for people who were still alive. Sure. Yeah. So, the, like, if, do you ever wonder how you're watching a, a, a some cable network and all of a sudden somebody dies and within an hour they have a complete documentary on the guy's life or the yeah. person's life? Could be a woman, too. The reason is because they have it. They have these already pre-made up. Yeah. And the one you always had hanging on the wall in a radio station or in a TV station, it was in a special little place, was an obituary for the president. Oh. Well, whoever the president happened to be at the time. So the minute he died, you could just slap that thing on the air. You were ready to go. Wow. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. We have too many of these little things, man. What? what? Dongle? They're the little wireless things. I have my computer, I have all these there, and I need to take out this mouse for this mouse, and I'm trying to figure out which is which. Oh, yeah, I have like five of them in one of my <laughs> USB uh, things, and I had, I'm i afraid to take them out because I, you know, I just haven't had time to figure out which one is the one. For this, exactly. For this <clears throat> one, and then when this one goes bad, I go buy a new one, and it gets a new dongle. It gets a new USB yeah. wireless thing. Yeah. One of these crazy mouse. Mice. Is that a mice? Mouse? Mouses? Mouse. Mooses. Mooses. Moose. Yeah. Moose. Yeah. <laughs> To hold it like my hands i have big hands so my my uh ergonomics person at work said to use these because uh my hand is wraps around these and that get carpal tunnel from that yeah. so i have this and nobody can work on my computer everyone tries to do something on my computer and they just they just stop because they can't do it but you find, you find you find you find it easy enough to use yeah uh like after the first year <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After the first, it was tough year. for me. But then Tiffany comes to use my to use my charging station for her work, 
and then she she like throws this at me. So, <laughs> well, I um uh I um um today I I I had a thing happen where I got this. Uh, uh, oh, here's Matt Duckworth. Hold on a second. Admit Matt Duckworth. There we go. Here comes Matt. Hi, Matt. How you doing? Uh, anyway, um, I got a thing from my the guy who did my my uh, prostate seeds and the radiation that I had mm -hmm. done. He was the oncologist, and I got a call from their office, and I went, "What? Well, gee, I wonder what this is about. Am I dead? Uh, and I just don't know it." Or maybe we have to recall your seeds, you know, or something like that. No, what they were doing is the doctor himself is doing research on how people have done with the uh, brachytherapy, which was the seeds, versus the radiation, which I also had, versus just what they call radical prostatectomy, mm -hmm. which is rem removing the prostate. And they're doing research, and they said, "Do you want to be part of this research?" And I said, "Sure." So, they had to send me this thing that I had to sign a consent form, so that they could then pry into my, I guess, my butt all over again. But anyway, um, I said, "I don't have to go down there or anything." They just send me, you know, what do you call it, uh, uh, questionnaires and things like that. And I went to sign my name on this thing. And because of this hand and having, you know, fallen on it, and because of the arthritis, I could barely sign my signature. I mean, you don't really have to sign your signature. You can just go, blah, 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 and they say, okay, that's your signature. But in the old days, didn't you used to have to actually have a signature? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but now I just go, bet. The Bennett I can usually get to. The Schwarzman, forget it. It's just SC. Blah. And I have I no control. Uh, I have no control over this hand. And I'm not a lefty. I can't write with my left hand to save my life. So, um, why would it have to be this hand? Why couldn't it be this hand? I do everything with this hand. You know. I, uh, everything I eat I, with, I eat yes everything Kevin everything <laughs> everything everything no but I mean I eat with this hand I write with this hand I uh what else oh I, mm. yeah that has hand uh and uh so um oh here here comes John Larkin we haven't seen John in a while mm. gee all of a sudden we're getting a full full house here mm. good that's terrific hi yeah which means Scott Boddicker will now be quiet for the rest of the show. Yeah. <laughs> last, night, last night I was listening on my phone and I couldn't see that. I thought, is that Boddicker? I, I couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah, it was Boddicker. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Were you here last night, Brian? I think. No, no, no I was listening. No, oh, I, yeah. I was doing something. Usually, I, usually I miss you. Game. Why didn't I miss you last night? I guess because I had Phil, and of course, yeah, Phil. Yeah. Oh, Phil. Yeah. Phil, Phil, Phil makes... Between Phil and Alan, I can't get a word in. So, you know, sometimes I just throw the white towel. Oh, yeah. In. Don't say Alan. Oh, wait a minute. Don't say his name three times or he'll come. He'll call the show. I'll call it. Yeah. 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 But anyway, um, uh, you know what I was watching? Uh, and it is, Brian, I want to ask you about this. I was watching a thing today on Tesla, on Tesla's. A guy who was reviewing all the models of the Teslas. Do you know they have the Model S, right? Yes. They have the Model E. Three. And they three. Have, uh, no. No, it's three. Three. Three, then, which is the E backwards, so sometimes they use that, yes. Yes, and then and they, they have, have the X. Yes. And they have the Y. Yes. And what does that spell? Elon Musk is a genius. <laughs> Sexy. Brian, yeah. said that, yeah. Brian said mm -hmm. that a couple months ago. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he 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 has a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know how he'll be on Twitter, but he has a good sense of humor. That's for sure. Yeah. That's a that's a long plan, you know, to start out with the S and then to say you're going to do Y, and yeah. that's like. 10, do you years know ago. who he used to date or was going with for a while? Amber Heard. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. Uh, and I don't think I don't know if that was before or after Johnny Depp. You know. Yeah, I listened to a little bit of that. Did you, did she you poop on his <laughs> bed? What? Did she poop in his bed? No, no. <laughs> she pooped in his Tesla. 
Anyway, so I was I was watching this thing, and the top of the line Tesla, or yes. no, the next to the top of the line gets the most mileage on one charge. Yes, and it's something like four hundred and eight miles. No, no, six hundred. Oh, is it up to Whoa. that now? There's one that's about six hundred and forty. It's the uh, I think they call it the Roadster. Oh, and it's 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 it's. it's Kind of expensive. It's about two hundred fifty thousand. I'd say that's kind of, expen- what, that's what do you, kind of expensive. What well, How rich are you oh, that you just kind of may think that's kind of it, expensive? But he does like zero to sixty in like one point two seconds or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the plaid. The plaid is so fast. My friend just picked up a plaid, and then my friend just picked up a lucid. So lucid is another all electric, and it's like a bigger sedan. And I drove that last night. That's pretty nice, but it's uh, another hundred and thirty something. Which one did you buy? You bought the cheapest one, right? Uh, no, the 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 new one, it, but they're a very good price. They're like sixty thousand. So sixty thousand. It's the Y, so it's the bigger yeah. one. Yes, yeah, the bigger one. So the family fits the kids. Well, I guess in it. my day when I was making good money at, at mm-hmm. like Live One Hundred Five, I probably could afford. I could afford one because yeah. I was driving a forty-five thousand dollar car at that time. So oh yeah, that's yeah. really expensive back then. Yeah, so I mean, I could afford a. a yeah. Uh, Tesla today, but they look cool, you know. And if I if I knew I could get at least four hundred miles to the to the charge, I yeah. think that's reasonable. I don't <clears> think you'd ever get into a situation where you couldn't. And they say you can charge to about eighty percent charge, in some cases, in five minutes. No, no, they have. So so we did an LA trip mm-hmm. for the the cruise, mm-hmm. and we started here full, and then we went down to. Bravo Farms is Kettleman mm-hmm. on I-5. Kevin, I'm sure, knows that very well. And then we we mm-hmm. were there, and it's a 30-minute charge, full charge. We, they have, like, a little cafe and stuff. And so we – and we usually stop there anyway, so it's pretty funny. So so we stopped there, and then we had one other stop uh, just before L.A. because we wanted to have well, that. Well, we created a restaurant yeah. right there, so it wasn't really out of our way. So, yeah, but how much of a charge did you get when you put it in, you know, when you stopped and you – Put yes, three hundred miles. Hers is three hundred miles. No, no. But what I'm saying is how how you went to eat, right? Mm-hmm. And then after you came back from eating, how many minutes was that? Do you figure? It was about thirty minutes. About thirty minutes. And how yeah. much? How much of a charge did it get? It went to one hundred percent from nineteen percent to one hundred percent in in a half hour. Half hour. Okay, it's ready for prime time now. Mm-hmm. You know. It's ready for prime. And, and there was a bunch of Teslas there. And I was worried because when you drive, you can see the map and it tells you those spots and it says how many are available. And there's 37 available. And I said, man, that's going to start filling up during the day. And it didn't because people are in and then they're out. Yeah. Because I see all these ads on TV where they go, and you can get yourself this new electric car. And they show the people just plugging it in. And then uh, later, the next shot, they're driving down the road. And I'm going, yeah. I don't know if it's that fast. Yeah, not <laughs> five know? minutes. They're trying to make it look. To, to put gas in your car it takes at least ten minutes sometimes. You know. Yeah. There, there's a video. Musk had this thing. It was a bat, battery exchange, and I don't know if it even went through. But what he did was he showed <clears throat> he showed a guy on the video in this big presentation. The guy was getting gas. So the Tesla pulled up on this ramp in this studio mm-hmm. with this audience. And in the in the background was the guy just pulled up and they start filling the gas tank and they start this battery swap. So this thing comes up, grabs a battery, exchange it with another battery, and the guy's still filling up. Well, that Tesla's done. Actually, another Tesla came up and they exchanged that battery. So they exchanged two batteries before the guy got a full tank of gas in the car. <laughs> yeah. That's on YouTube. Isn't there? I don't think I ever went through because I never see him around. Yeah, there is a thing where they can re- just replace the battery. There's a company that has a system where you just drive up, yeah, put put yourself on this one spot. It just yeah. automatically removes the battery, slaps yep. another one in. That's that's it. Yep. Now also, yeah, I gotta, Tesla's. I gotta go change the water. I'll be back. <laughs> I, I I lied about the Tesla, the Roadster. Mm-hmm. It's one point nine seconds to sixty, but. It has a top end of 250 miles per hour. Oh, jeez. Well, so, yeah. I don't need that. That's crazy. Well, yeah. It'd be fun. Hmm? <laughs> my <laughs> my son's that, office bought one, used, I believe it's, and uh, the price was a lot better. And, and it was because the dealer had used it 
for so many miles that they wanted to get rid of it because they always wanted to have a new one to show other people. Well, this one guy who did this thing said he had had his Tesla for four years and there was no discernible depreciation in the battery life. Wow. That it, it's pretty, you know, he said he was, everybody that I've seen on YouTube who's talking about Tesla, mm-hmm. who has a Tesla, are all delighted with it, just absolutely delighted with it. Now, the question I have here, and uh, I'd have to wait for Brian to come back because he owns one, um, was, uh, 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 what was the question I was going to ask? Oh, yeah. How much electricity does it use, and how much does that cost you a month in electrical charges, as opposed to, uh, uh, ga- you know, gasoline? Mm-hmm. There are places, Alex, you can charge those things for free at like g- grocery stores. Yeah, but Based how long? Here. How long? How long do you think that's going to last? Well, until there's too much demand for it. But yeah. Yeah, but I mean, but, what? Mm-hmm. I, what were you saying, Jeff? Well, I th- I think their prices are much better than uh, ha- than a gas. Oh, I'm sure it's car. it's better oh, than gas. Is, Plus, out here, my son has to charge his okay, car. Oh, wait a minute, let me ask Brian. Office. Let me ask Brian. Brian, yes, you uh you you charge yours at home, right? Yeah, yeah. Is yours a fast charger or just a regular charger that comes uh. with it? So we have a regular charger, the 110, Wait a minute, what, what, what uh, and then and then we upgrade. Well, we're doing the construction on the house, so we upgraded to the, the whatever it is, the NEMA 115 or something. But the 110, when you charge, when you have like 25% battery and you put that thing in, it says like 24 hours plus of charge needed. <laughs> so it, it takes like four days, three days if you do it just the 110. But the other one was uh, eight hours. Okay, is that the that's the fast charger, right? Yeah, it's just like it's just like your charger, um, the washer and dryer charger. You know, the dryer, yeah, the dryer yeah. plug, yeah, plug that in, and it's about eight hours. So for her, it's perfect because she just drives it back and forth to work. So, so what do you do? You have an electrical guy come over and put DC in there in your garage, right? Two twenty up, yeah, yeah, yeah two twenty, and then do you have to get a different charger, or you can you just use uh, the, the the cord? Yeah. Uh, the cord has like that much. That's like a, a adapter, so mm-hmm. it, it, there's an adapter that goes with it. Okay, but but it's like um, an RV. Yeah, but my question is, the, supposedly there was a fast charger that they have for that that you can buy. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, they have a little unit. It's like five hundred dollars that mm-hmm. you can buy, mm-hmm. and that. I don't know how fast that one is, but. So in other words, you can charge your wife when she comes home, plug it in. In the morning, you're good to go, right? Good to go. And then she can go to work, actually, and they have chargers there. And you get a card from work, and it's it's almost like a regulation now. All this Silicon Valley area, you have to have so many char- It's almost like handicap. You have to have so many chargers for uh, all the buildings over there. Every, every building has a charger over there. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. When you look out here, it's bizarre, probably compared to what you're used to, because Kevin knows, and, and even John, you walk out here, and you'll see car, 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 Tesla, car, car, Tesla, 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 car, 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 Tesla. Or I mean, like, like every like, three or four out of ten cars are Teslas out here. Well, I, uh, from what the, the, w- this was said on this little presentation that this guy did, uh, the amount of Teslas out there are millions upon millions now. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's a very popular car, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think people are seeing it as a reasonable uh, way not to use uh, gasoline. Plus, plus, and this is the nice part about it, but it hasn't gone through yet. If you buy one, the government has a plan to give you something like eight thousand dollars. Yeah, the back. so Tesla's out of money right now for that, but the. The Mustang Mach E, I almost bought one because that one still has money. So it's like forty-seven thousand for a pretty base model, mm-hmm. and then it's almost ten thousand dollars back. You get like seven thousand from the government, and then there's like two other things you can put a bid in for that you can get. But it's almost like ten thousand back. 
So really, they're making it uh, very reasonable for people to start mm -hmm. getting these uh, these electric automobiles. I mean, I at least here where I, I don't know I don't know in Plano, Texas, how many how many Teslas you see. I, there yeah, there I, are a lot of Teslas actually. I don't know how you yeah. buy one. Where I don't where's the Tesla you, store? You, to begin with, to begin with, you have to put down two hundred and fifty dollars in order to order one. Mm. Am I right about that? Yeah, problem? yeah, we yeah we put uh yeah we put money to order it and then it came. Uh, about five or six months later. Yeah, it's just not like you get them overnight. Mm -hmm. you, you, know. you can rent them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now they're renting Hertz. them. I think Hertz rent, bought a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. 100,000 of them or something. Well, like I, wondered, yeah. I wondered how Elon Musk, who I thought was something like number three or four in the world, money-wise, suddenly became the richest man in the world, surpassing Bezos like, well, like or the top of the line Tesla passes other cars on the on the on the road. Well, I mean, well, in the in the last two years, Tesla's stock's gone up about thirty times its value. You know, it's taken off yeah. since the pandemic. Because I just thought, oh, he's doing those Teslas, isn't that nice? You know, whatever. I didn't realize that many people were buying Teslas. Yeah. Well, Bezos got divorced too. <laughs> yeah, that didn't help. Well, that Ow. didn't help either, but. Uh, you know, I still think uh, uh, Musk would still be the wealthiest guy around. Uh, yeah, well, because of his stock. You know, almost yeah. all his wealth is in stock, and the stock has just, you know, fucking exploded in the last couple of years. Yeah, but and he's got two things that he's making money, big money off of, and that's Tesla and SpaceX. SpaceX is a money-making proposition now. Yeah. The government is paying how many hundreds of millions of dollars per flight to take these guys up there. You yeah. Know? And with Ru Russia threatening to crash the space station, okay, uh, we're going to need him on call with a rocket ready to go to the space station and pick our guys up before they try to ditch it, you know? So. Oh, so funny. It's, Did you see the picture that's floating around of him like, like 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Putin? No, no, of uh, of uh, Elon Musk. Oh no, no. What he? His hair is like looks like he's bald on top. It's really weird. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah. Not that he yeah, doesn't look weird right. now. Oh. You know. No. Um. He, I like him. I, 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 it's strange, but I really like him. Um. Uh, there's something about him that is so awkward that I like him, you know? There seems to be no pretense in the guy. He's he's a little nuts, he's a little crazy, but a little nuts and a little crazy is what got those rockets off the ground and landing back on, uh, coming back and landing. Because it's that thinking out of the box that he has going for him that says, okay, let's do it this way. Let's do that. Why can't these things come back and land? Well, I've never done it before. Well, let's do it. You know, mm -hmm. so I kind of like him. Now the question is, what do you think is going to happen with I with with Twitter? Is that going to be a money making proposition for oh, him? He'll probably make tons of money on it somehow. Well, but one of the things he's thinking of doing is making it a subscription service. Mm -hmm. You know, not giving it away for free. Uh, and is, is, is he going to allow naked women on it then? I won't do it otherwise. Well, <laughs> it should be allowed, shouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, who, who here boobies. doesn't want to see boobies. some boobies here? You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I, no, I'm sure be, there'll be a no porn. Uh, excuse me, I'm feeling like I have to sneeze. <laughs> a no porn uh, caveat, but. You know, yeah. well, what he says he's for freedom of speech. Isn't that freedom of speech? In my expression. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I just hope he I just hope he holds back when things go awry. You know, what do you mean holds back? Well, that's what they're worried about. Right. They said that, you know, he, he gets a little explosive when he has, you know, things against people and tries to blast people through through social media stuff. So. 
Yeah, but he. But he, here's his theory on the whole thing. And Marjorie, as I've said, is all worried. Oh, he's going to let Trump back on. Well, oh. does anybody here care whether Trump's back on Twitter or not? Yeah. <laughs> you Me? do care. Why do you care? Trump is a dangerous fucking thing. It's it. it the Trumpism is a poison to this country. And if you if you can't see what's going on, then shit. I mean, you 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 just. Well, not paying attention. To quote Roosevelt, all we have to fear is fear itself. I mean, the only reason you fear Trump is because you fear him. Right. You know, uh, but if you don't fear him, you disarm him, really. It, it, it's uh, kind of yeah. like everybody's afraid of Putin, and that's Putin's power. <laughs> Why give Trump that power by being afraid of him or what he has to say? Because he's because it's it's not him. It's it's Trumpism. It's it's what the uh, Trumpism is going to exist anyway. That's true. But you, 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 that's like the Nazis. You don't you want to snuff it out. You don't want to give them any any uh, any. OK, boxes. my question is, though, let's say you open up a, a social media thing like Facebook or Twitter. And your idea is anybody can post anything they wanted to. Hey, on Facebook, you get, you get your wall. You can post anything you want to on it. Now, you've said that in the beginning. But now some people are using it in ways you don't agree with, you don't like what they're saying, and you start censoring that. Aren't you going against the basic principle that you use to set the thing up in the first place? Excuse me, i got to blow my nose or I'm going to sneeze. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you are, because people are abusing it, and you're. Well, it's, how it's, you abuse? Uh, but how, you're saying abusing it. You have to describe abusing. And one man, you know, you think somebody's abusing it. They don't think they're abusing it. Well, like um, a government, um, a fascist government, like uh, I don't know what that that government in Myanmar or something like that declares that a whole class of people are cockroaches and they should be eliminated. And then, and then all of a sudden their followers start murdering them because of what they've read on the, on the, uh, on social media. Yeah, but isn't media. there something we can do even though you allow those people on, and I think if somebody went on on Twitter under um, Musk and called for the death of people, people should go out and kill other people, I don't think he would let that happen. I hope not. You know, I don't think he would let that happen. I mean, I he said, he said, we will not censor anything unless it goes against the laws of a country, particular country that that Twitter is in, that tweet is in. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, but I mean, I don't know. Do you? You know, I mean, I, I, I agree with, with Musk on this, and I've said this always about, and I mentioned this last night, he said it, and I've, I've been saying it for years, that free speech is absolute. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as free speech that gets censored. Now, you may say there's irresponsible speech that would come under that cat in that category, but it's still free speech. Now, you either do or you don't. You know, you could say, hey, this is our home. It's called Twitter. We don't like this kind of stuff. We're not going to allow that. But you don't say, everybody, you can say what you want to say. And that's what they say. And that's what Facebook says. So the question is, how can, those, how can that philosophy of, of, of freedom of expression exist and still have a safety net? And what is that? How do, you, how do you enforce that safety net? Is it by your standards of what's right and wrong or by other standards of what's right and wrong? You know? Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Both, both of those it's a very, equations it's a, it's a very, are it's a very, happen. It's a very slippery slope. Yeah. It is. You know? Well, you know, what's a, what's a joke is the these right-wingers now, they're all happy because Musk is is buying uh, Twitter and they're saying, oh, it's, he's going to turn it into a free speech, uh, you know, paradise. But before it can become a, a free speech paradise, we have to purge all the liberals and the Democrats, get all those filthy Democrats that work at Twitter and fire them. 
you know that's what they're saying so what so, makes you what makes you think that what what leads you to believe that Elon Musk is a right winger or a left no, winger he's not no i'm not saying i'm not saying he is i'm just saying that the right wingers the the fox news and the mm. ben shapiro and all those guys are are saying are the, they're applauding that Musk bought the company thinking that he's Gonna yeah, but they don't, don't don't gonna, they don't know what he's going to. They don't know. I know. I agree. I don't know. I'm just saying. They know that he probably, you know, there have only been a few people that have been banned from Twitter. I think one is uh, is Trump. We all know, and I Me, think. Uh, I, hmm? <laughs> I was banned. <laughs> you were banned from Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still banned from Twitter? I was banned. Yeah, for calling. Uh, uh, what's that uh, lady that's married to uh, Trump's son? I called her a SF. I called her an SF Coco or something like that. <laughs> what? What? But the one, the lady that was uh, married. To, what's her name? Guilfoyle. Mm -hmm. She used to Kimberly be married Gilfoyle. to. Uh, she was the. She was like the first lady of San Francisco when she was married to Gavin Newsom, and mm -hmm. I just got pissed off at her. One of her tweets one time, and called her a SF, you know, Coco or something. Yeah, but what was that? What, what does that mean? Well, you know, that it was you. You can't you can't uh, say shit like that to people. I guess. <laughs> no, but what did you What did you say? I, you, you're not making any sense. I mean, well, I, I mean, I called her. I I tweeted back at her. You know, I responded to one of her tweets. Oh, okay. And called her a, uh, you know, SF, crack ho. Crack ho. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't know. Okay, let's just, let's just for a moment yeah. <laughs> pretend like we all own Twitter. Would you allow that, and it was a reply to a tweet, right? It wasn't a tweet you did yourself. You were replying to Kimberly Guilfoyle. Yeah, well, she tweeted some bullshit, and then I, and I tweeted back at her and called her, uh, insulted her. Now, are the rules at Twitter against uh, going after people that way? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you can't do that. But to anybody? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, is that reasonable or not reasonable? That's reasonable. But reasonable that you should have been censored for that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But she's still a crack hoe. <laughs> well, now you said it on my show, and guess what's going to happen with me and you two? <laughs> Adrian got banned off of TikTok. Adrian, your little what? Adrian, little what? How old is she now? What? Five. When she was no, she's six now. But when she was five, she used. I opened up a TikTok account with my email on there, mm -hmm. and she was doing all these with her crop top, doing all these videos and stuff like that. And they they already sent a couple messages saying they deleted it. They deleted it, and then all of a sudden she says. Daddy, what's banded? Banded. <laughs> he said, I'm banded. I said, banded? I look, I said, oh, you're banned. No more they talk for you. Well, wait a minute. Now, hold on a second. Because you have a five-year-old with a crop top doing all these woo oh, moves. You know? oh, oh, she was doing it. It was doing all, you know, she sees these girls doing these. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so because every every time you flip, you flip through TikTok and there's another br large-breasted woman, and another large-breasted woman, and another. And all she sees is a dance. By the way, yeah, nobody notices the dance, that most things out her booty and do stuff like that. I'm like, no, 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 you cannot do that stuff. You know something? Whatever you do, do not buy her a stripper pole. <laughs> okay. I know. I had to take down mine already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but she, so she was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I can she's doing black pink and all that stuff, you know, and they're all Oh, you got more to come. <laughs> oh boy, you're in for a world of trouble with her. She's yeah. reading now. I have her reading, no TikTok. <laughs> oh, okay. No TikTok. Was she disappointed when she was taken off TikTok? She didn't want to make No, she still watches the she still goes on there and sees the stuff like Facebook Reels, but no, she's okay. I I don't get what TikTok I mean, I TikTok is it's intoxicating because you're sitting there flipping and there's something else and there's something else and there's something else, but they're all really short, right? Oh. Yeah. yeah. And you can't say anything longer of that particular thing. Yeah. Cause there's that, a lot of weird shit on there though. Like, you know, animals getting eaten by uh, like, like somebody's dog getting eaten by a uh, alligator oh. and crap like that. Just horrible. Stuff on there. 
Huh? Tiffany watches those pimple doctors where they have like like some pimple all white, and oh. then they take the needle and they pop it, and all this juice comes out. Oh, God. <laughs> she watches that stuff nonstop. I go from the oh. back and I see what she's watching. I'm like, "What the hell are you doing?" So, so right when you start watching that, the more come to her, right? Yeah. You know, so they, she just keeps getting more of these and more of these. It's really gross. Wow. That's amazing. Because, I mean, the thing that I've been addicted to lately, I mean, whenever, they, when I have, I, there are no more TV shows to watch. Uh, I go immediately to YouTube and I just start scrolling mm -hmm. through it. And about every fifth one, I stop and watch the 50 ways to uh, uh, prevent testicular cancer or whatever, you know. Um, but I mean, I, I start watching all these these videos, and uh, the ones that I'm fascinated with lately is this guy called the um, scammer. Um, oh, what's the last name? If you type in scammer, you'll you'll get it. Um, and it's a guy who calls up like scammers, call him or whatever, and go, you know, and. Uh, we, 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 we want to send you some money, okay? And here, now sign on to this, sign on to that. So he does mm -hmm. all that, but he's a hacker himself. And what he's doing while they're doing all of this is he's reverse hacking into their system, and while they're talking to him, now this is from like India in most cases. Um, there's this one place in India he loves. He knows where they are. He knows what floor they're on, whatever. He just is sitting there while you're watching this, erasing all the files on their computer. What the hell? Yeah. And you're just sitting there cheering him, you know, because every time you've ever gotten a, you know, a, a spam call, you've wanted to do this yourself, but you just never knew how to. Well, he knows how to. He actually has a fake bank account. So that when they say, oh, bring this up, and now we're onto your machine, and we can see your bank account, and we'll oh. send this stuff to you, and they're sucking money out of your account. They're sucking money out of, out of an account that doesn't exist. And then he somehow reverses it, so they wind up giving him money, and he refuses to give it. I mean, it's very funny. It's called, what's it called? Scam Scammer Payback. Scammer Payback. Just go to YouTube. Type in under find scammer payback and there's a whole channel there of this stuff and and for a while you will just be mesmerized by what this guy is doing and a lot of people have tried to imitate him doing the same thing uh very very popular he on one case in one case i looked he had 16 million views oh yeah so so that girl with her makeup tips has to stand aside for that you know. When you do your walk, you need to say, hit the, you know, you need to tell them about your show because when I see the people that are on there that make that make uh, comments, they're like, oh, wow, I used to listen to you, blah, blah, blah. You have to every once in a while mention, hey, by the way, I'm on a podcast and da, da, da. I'm not very good at self-promotion. <laughs> I'll remind you. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean. Hit subscribe, smash that like button. Yes, <laughs> smash the like button and hit the bell. Hit the bell so we can notify you, you know. Um, boy, yeah, yeah. But uh, we got a lot of people watching tonight. I got to tell you. Um, phone your friends. Tell them all to watch. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, Scott, everything good down there in Texas? Hey, that woman didn't get executed. Uh, they'll still get her. Do you think they're going to still get her? Yeah. What do you, why do you Texas. say that? Well, but but the the court has reversed her, her death sentence, and now it has to go back into court and, uh, oh. you know. Well, yeah, they, they, they put it on pause so they can have a hearing to see if it's, she can get a retrial, I think. This is about a woman who had a daughter. She had How many kids did she have? She had like 11 kids or 12 kids. Something know. like that. And this one young child fell down the stairs and died from a concussion. And they mm -hmm. tried to say that she beat her kid. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then they it worked for a day, you know, constantly interrogating her, constantly interrogating her until she finally just figured she wanted it all to go away. She just said, okay, I did it. You know? 
And, and, and she didn't really admit to it. She just said, if you want me to say that, okay. You know? And it was really, it was something. It was really something. Um, and she was sentenced to death. And she's been on death row for how many years? Maybe, I think it, it was 17, 15. 15, I something. It was 17, but I looked it up. It was 2007 she was convicted. Yeah. And she's been on death row since then. She was supposed to die this week. And then a, an appeals court uh, vacated the, the uh, execution. And now it has to go to a lo another court for them to like either retry it or decide whether they're going to retry it or whatever. But uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was one of the few things Republicans and Democrats in your state agreed on <laughs> was, you know, vacating her sentence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the big news in Texas. Mm -hmm. What's the big news in Connecticut, Jeff? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing new. Where is Connecticut, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> It's right here. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Uh, it's it's within shouting distance of here. You know. So. That's true. And Kevin, how about your your neck of the woods? Not a lot. Boy, what a boring bunch of people. No mm -hmm. Gilroy Garlic Festival, I guess. It's in Fresno. They 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 announced the one in Fresno, so that's got everybody whirled up. Yeah, yeah. Garlic Festival in Fresno. Yep, the well, first national garlic festival. Oh, 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 really? And is that known for a, a place known for garlic sales? Yep, as well as where they grow it. And even Christopher Garlic, who's here in Gilroy, is out there. Christopher Garlic? Yeah. Who's he? Who's, who's he? Christopher Ranch. Oh, I see. <laughs> so yeah, it's on most you look on the labels it's probably on your garlic out there too yeah i think I i've seen it i think i've seen it i mean the crushed what garlic you smell when you come through gilroy <clears throat> a bottle of crushed garlic and it's like christopher garlic yeah christopher, christopher ranch, yeah. ranch garlic okay. if you go if you come through gilroy you smell it because that's where they process it but they grow it out in you know what was most intoxicating smell is i used to have a a, a tea top and I would take the tea top down on a nice warm night in in Northern California, which was about once a year, uh, and uh, I would drive up through Sonoma, and during the time when they were st stomping on the grapes, mm -hmm. they were harvesting the grapes, and the whole valley smelled of wine. Mm -hmm. You could just smell it in the air, and it was a wonderful smell. I just loved it, you know. Going not, into the cellars is always nice too. What? Going into the cellars, I always like going in the cellars. Mm. Well, you, so now, where so they now, got the barrels, and the barrels, and all that stuff. Well, you know, there used to be a time when you could go there and you could go into those wineries and sample their wine. You can still do it. Well, but now they charge you for it, don't they? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they didn't charge you in those days. No, they used to it, go it, for free. Now it's now it's, it's an experience. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you swirl it around, you stick it in your nose, and then they charge you for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and now they had a big frost issue this last month. Mm -hmm. and so now all the wine growers down there are all wanting money from the government to help subsidize all their loss, which is bullshit. Right before that, it was fires because all the smoke. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's risk, right? It's just their business, and they if they lose their crop, how do they get millions of dollars back? They just use the same thing as the cars, you know, the, the, the banks and everybody else. They want money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, didn't, uh, wasn't there a problem that uh, I think Coppola's winery burned down or something, didn't it, during the last fires? I'm not sure if his got it, but there was a bunch of them up there that did. Part of his might have. Yeah. By the way. There's a couple of yeah. big ones that got Got it. Speaking of Coppola, then do any of you people have Paramount Plus? You do. Uh, there's a new show they've got on. It's a series. It's a mini series. It, well, it's not a mini series. It's uh, who knows how long. It, maybe it's just a mini series. Ten episodes. The Offer. The Offer. Yes. Which is a drama, drama about the making of and The, the Godfather. Godfather, and it's fascinating. It, it there are three episodes. Is it ready? On, huh? Did you see it? Yeah. You saw it? Oh, uh, oh, I brought this up last couple of weeks ago. 
And I don't have Paramount Plus, and now I had to buy that to see this show. Yeah. 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 yeah that's what I'm... Anybody watch Severance? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I like that. Show. That's a good it's show. Strange show. Strange Very show. Strange. That's on Apple Plus. But no, yeah. Paramount Plus. I uh, I'm paying for it, and I because I like it. They have a lot of the Star Trek stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they've got this. They had that eight, uh, uh, 1886. Uh, 1883. 1883. Okay. I'm off by three years. Maybe it's a knockoff. What's that about? (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. The offer. The offer. So I asked last week, is the offer like a, is it like, is this supposed to be true? Yes, it is true. It's absolutely true. Yeah. And I mean, it's got some fascinating. No, not not sort of. No. It was produced by the guy who produced The Godfather. Yeah. And the story mm-hmm. is supposedly absolutely true. I mean, the, what they had to go through to get this thing made in New York by having to go to the mob and convince yeah. them that they weren't doing a movie that was detrimental to the Italians. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah and, it, and it's really, really good. It's fascinating. And wow. uh, they, they put up three episodes initially, and then they'll run them at one a week for the rest of the rest of the series. But it's good. It's really good. If I come over and visit this summer, can I just sit there and watch that? Sure, you? sure. We'll just set you up in a room and you can watch all 10 episodes of it. Yeah, and I heard like the, the stories were like the FBI followed around Mario Puzo for a while after this movie because he knew so much about what was going on. There was so much stuff that was real in the movie that, uh, yeah, they were interested in a lot of stuff he was talking about. Well, they, you know, what they had to convince the mob was we're not making the book. The book was kind of something they could be pissed at, okay? But in the movie, uh, the, he convinced them. He actually they took him on a little ride over to Brooklyn, uh, and he met with uh, Columbo, uh, and Joe Columbo, and he convinced Columbo. He had Columbo come to Paramount, in, in New York and read the script and Columbo didn't want to read a whole script so he just believed that he was doing right by him said the only request I have and you've got to keep this request is in nowhere in the film do you use the word mafia ah. and if you go back and watch Godfather they never use the word God, mafia and in fact Coppola in it says well we only mention mafia once in the whole screenplay uh, and that's when he goes to visit the uh, the producer, and the producer says, "Do you think I want any of you mafia goombas telling me what to do?" And he and and he asked Coble, "Can you take that mafia reference out?" And he said, "Sure, that's what it takes to make the movie in New York." Sure. So there's wow. they never use the word mafia in the movie. Our mm. thing, uh, the family, whatever, right. our business. Yeah. But it's not. Uh, there's not a mention of the word mafia, so you know. That's awesome. Pretty yeah, I want to see it so bad, Pretty but cool. geez, I got to pay for that. I wonder why my picture keeps glitching. Does anybody notice that? I just saw it just now. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's not. You know, there, there it was. Brian, Brian, you have two McLarens. Mm-hmm. You can pay for Paramount Plus. <laughs> I have one McLaren. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, oh, forget it then. How many Teslas do you have? One. I have, so I have three cars that drive totally different. So the Cadillac CT6, there's an automatic that you go Cadillac. like this. And then the the Tesla, you have to shift by this thing. And then the McLaren is a push button shift. Oh my God, sometimes I start hitting the turn signal when I'm driving one car and it's the Yeah, wait till you get your other one. Yeah. <laughs> Your second McLaren, right? No, 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 no. It's oh, my thirty-two Cadillac is almost drivable. So, yeah. Oh, cool. Is it going to be ready uh, for uh, West Coast? Yeah, I think so. We're just going to trailer it down and pull it off the trailer and pull it in nice. and yeah, go on the cruise. Hmm. And you're going, right, Kevin? I'm trying. Yeah. Okay. You're going where? Where? Down to West Coast Customs. The, yeah, it's our, the car show down in Santa Maria. Oh, okay. yeah, it's, our, it's our club's big meet. Uh, there's a channel right next to my news channels. It's a car mm. show channel. Every time I tune it in, you know, like I'll go up to CNN and go one up further by accident, and there it is, and they're showing cars at car shows. Do you know that channel? Yeah. Which one is it? Motor Trend? No. No. Like cars in Octane 
they have one show that they run a lot different things yeah but they just they just show one car show after another um i saw i'm I'm gonna watch that too yeah and it's a show where they're always they're rebuilding cars and stuff oh yeah yeah well but they (laughs) those places they show it like in two weeks you know they build a whole car (laughs) yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, Re- restoring them and stuff. Mm-hmm. That that's uh, car porn. Yeah, for us. Yeah. Car porn. <laughs> yeah. Hey Ray, how you doing? Are you doing any work? Wait a minute. I was on mute. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Am I doing work? No, I'm not. Really? Hmm. What? What? There's no more. I have an audition for another commercial uh, this week. What do they do? No. Close show business down or something, or what? For old white men, old straight white men. Yeah. Eighty-two year old guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Diversity and inclusion. Now the white people have no jobs. Yeah. What? Well, especially <laughs> old straight white men. We're the enemy. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Game of Tears. She's doing Game of Tears as her next play. Who, who's that? That's uh, that's the Stephanie. Yeah. Stephanie, yeah, it's she did uh, the Peach, uh, James and the Giant Peach, uh, last month, and they're oh, doing good. another play. So good. At good school good. or yeah. she her yeah, uh, junior high school. She's eighth. Grade. By the way, we should mention oh, while right. we while we've got Kevin here is that uh, he has a very is it is it under your channel? Do you have a channel called Kevin Stopper? Is that it? Yeah. On YouTube, and he goes out and does these high school bands. Uh, some of them good, some of them incredible, and some of them not so incredible. Yeah, you know, it's just the ones my daughter's in. I love uh, that ad on TV where the woman is sitting inside her car, and there's this oh, symphony yeah. of high school kids playing the yeah. 2001, uh, the uh, uh, Space Odyssey, yeah. Th- uh, Thus spoke <laughs> Zarathustra theme from 2001. <laughs> That and it's horrible. It's just horrible. So she just closes the window in her car and lies back. Yeah, this yeah. is off me and my wife every time we see it. Well, that's a fucking bitch right there. Well, some of those bands, you have to admit, are a little out of tune. But you got to go with them because they're going well, to learn. Well, that's them. exactly it. And the fact that they're, oh, no. Are you, are you? Have you learned how to play that yet? I just bought it. I bought it on eBay for 150 bucks. Yeah, let's hear it. Oh Jesus! Just like that. Uh huh. Yeah. But you got to go through it. You join. I sat through a bunch of those, and we had to sit through all that <laughs> shit. But eventually, now you hear them. They just Art. went through an otter band. We sat through an otter Did, band concert last, last thing... night. Yeah. And it was awesome. They sound like a fucking orchestra. Yeah, yeah. So it's a That's place. School. It's a place for kids to learn and make their mistakes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and uh, and uh, for her to sit there in her little Lincoln and roll up the windows and shut them all out, we just sit there and go, "You bitch." <laughs> I bought a moot, so it's got electric thing, and I can hear it on my ears. You know, yeah, so uh, if I want to practice and not, without driving the. The neighbors know. Uh, what? Well, Didn't you have a, a couple other instruments too? The ukulele? Uh, I, got a, I got a clarinet, a couple of guitars. Mm-hmm. And from one to ten, how good are you at those? Horrible at all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you bring in the girl over and you mm-hmm. got all these instruments and she's like, oh my God, he's a musician. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. John's going to be out on the corner of Larkin and, and whatever, Eddie out there. With a one man band, love that sticks on the side together. I'm a musical instrument hoarder. Hey, listen, there's our theme song. Ooh, I have no idea. What's it called? Swing That Jazz Stick, it's called. <coughs> anyway. Oh, oh, don't. <laughs> I'd actually like to get my daughter to do your opening thing on the sax. I'm oh, okay. trying to get her to do well, it. Well, do it, do it. Let's, let's hear it sometime. Anyway, yeah. uh, hey, Jeff, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Scott, great, great nice. having you here, pal. Kevin, good having you here. Brian, always good having you here. I just glitched again. I'm going to have to turn this thing off and turn it back on again. Reboot. Tomorrow. Reboot. Reboot tomorrow. Uh, and uh, because this was happening last night, too. Uh, let me see here. Oh, yes, and thank you very much, uh, John Larkin. And, of course, Ray Renati. Thank you as well. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. 
and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, folks. Let me see here. Ah, there's my camera. Okay, there we go. And that's it. That's it for tonight. There they go, our citizen panel for this evening. We'll get another one together tomorrow night. And uh, in the meantime, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. And The Intersection uh, will take your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. As I said, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And Dr. Fauci says, all clear, folks, all clear. Bye.